Hi, I'm Melissa Cobb. We have exciting news for the aviation community. The FAA has released its proposal to modernize aircraft certification. This is the first major overhaul proposal of the aircraft certification rules in two decades. AOPA has been working on this for a long time with the FAA. AOPA Vice President of Regulatory Affairs, Murray Hewling, joins us to give us the inside scoop on what this means for the general aviation community and what it means for airplane owners. AOPA keeps flying safe, accessible, and fun by protecting your freedom to fly. We are the most trusted one-stop resource for all things related to general aviation. Become an AOPA pilot today. Hey Murray, thanks for joining us. Hi Alyssa, I'm glad to be here. Thanks. Well, can you give us, you know, a real quick high level overview of what this proposal does? Yeah, thank you. So the this proposal is the notice of proposed rulemaking that uh, the FAA just put out this morning. And what this does, it, it speaks to the light sport aircraft and uh, the manufacturing, uh, the pilot, uh, light sport pilot issues uh, and maintenance as well. So it's very comprehensive, uh, the rulemaking proposal is. All right, Murray, this all sounds exciting. Can you tell us more about the light sport aircraft capabilities, how the uh, performance criteria has been expanded, what it means for aircraft? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we've been working on this a long time and been advocating for a lot of this uh, expansion of the light sport aircraft envelope. Uh, this, these include uh, controllable pitch propellers, retractable landing gear, um, air speeds uh, going up to 250 knots calibrated airspeed, and just a, a very wide ranging uh, uh, envelope uh, and performance expansion. And with this, I understand that there are a lot of added safety benefits and safety features with this. What is an example of some of the safety equipment folks could be able to put in their aircraft now? Yeah, that's a great question and, and a very important question. Um, you know, a lot of the, the new technologies, uh, safety oriented, or one of them is FADEC, the full authority digital engine control systems, single pilot lever control, um, all of that's a lot of automated uh, uh, controllable pitch propellers and, you know, there, there's many others, but uh, those are probably the primary. Okay. And now for sport pilots, pilots who are operating uh, under the sport pilot regulation using driver's license as their medical, what does this mean for them? Do they have any expanded privileges? Uh, yeah, yeah, and another excellent question because this is definitely another area where AOPA was uh, definitely a major part in pushing this forward. Um, so for the light sport pilot, uh, there is an expansion that's going to help them as well. So what it's going to do is bring in uh, currently, I'll, I'll just start currently, the light sport pilot can only fly a two-seat aircraft and only carry one passenger under the expanded light sport aircraft, when those come in under this mosaic rule, uh, what that's gonna do is allow a light sport pilot to fly up to a four seat aircraft. However, when they're, out, when they're under a light sport, uh, they still will maintain the light sport uh, limitations. In other words, they can only take one passenger with them in that four seat aircraft. But what it does do is allow a lot more aircraft uh, that they're eligible to fly. Okay. And, uh, you know, this sounds like from all of this, the, the 170 could be eligible under this. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was doing a little research on some of the, uh, uh, you know, like the stall speed is going to be going up, uh, the VS1, which is the clean stall speed up to 54 knots. That is going to bring in a lot of other aircraft. A lot of the 182s are probably going to fall under this category as well you know, an, an equivalent aircraft like that. Murray, is there a new maximum weight with this? Yeah, so the NPRM is actually removing uh, the weight requirement for light sport aircraft. And that's where the uh, 54 knot stall speed is actually uh, gonna determine kind of where that uh, maximum weight is gonna end up. They're saying it, it'll be around the 3,000 pound range, but it's not formally written as 3,000 pounds. So it's based on that stall speed. 
Now, what other ways is this expanding uh, light sport aircraft? Yeah, so uh, it is actually going to be expanding into helicopters and gyroplanes and power to lift categories as well. So that was that, that's a really good uh, expansion of other categories of aircraft. So it, it's um, you know excellent to hear that. Okay, and anything with singles or multis? Yeah, so uh, one of the things that's in the proposal as well is there is going to be uh, no, uh, they're removing the single engine limitation. And um, so it's any, any number of engines and any type of engine is going to be uh, allowed. Well, for pilots, recreational pilots, private pilots hire, who are operating under sport pilot limitations, are there any expanded privileges for them? What does this mean? Yeah, so I think the best way to describe this is to use myself and as an example. I'm a private pilot. I fly under with a basic med. And, you know, as an example, if I would decide I want to fly as a light sport pilot, um, and let's say I did not renew my basic med, um, so I didn't have a medical at that point or a basic med at that point, I could still operate under the light sport pilot with just my driver's license. But I would be limited to light sport limitations of only one passenger. Uh, and for sport pilots themselves, do they have any expanded privileges under this? Yeah, one additional one that really caught my eye and I was really glad to see because I've had a lot of questions from members on this is the ability for a light sport pilot to operate a light sport aircraft night VFR. This NPRM, the FAA, is opening that up uh, with proper training uh, from a CFI and endorsement. They're going to be allowed to night VFR, fly night VFR as long as the aircraft meets regulatory requirements. Wonderful. And now uh, this rule also allows for some um, operations for hire to be conducted. Can you explain that for us a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the FAA, you know, they stepped up and uh, they understand that a lot of these aircraft and, and owners and operators uh, under light sport, they want to be able to do some of the aerial work. So uh, when the light sport aircraft is developed by the manufacturer, as long as they are designating that aircraft to be able to use for some aerial work. Some of the aerials are agricultural, uh, construction, aerial photography, surveying, observation and uh, uh, patrol, search and rescue, and aerial advertising. Uh, so those are named in the NPR NPRM. So they're, they're really uh, you know, allowing some of these expansions. Okay, and is there any effect for like experimental aircraft or restricted category aircraft in this? Yeah, it speaks to that as well, uh, the uh, restricted, limited, and experimental. So it's really all-encompassing. They're really looking at, you know, the different aircraft categories to look at. Okay, and earlier you mentioned uh, that this is even a, an overhaul uh, regarding maintenance on these aircraft. Is there anything else? Uh, will aircraft owners have any more privileges working on their aircraft, or uh, what is that section of the proposal? Yeah, they're they're uh, expanding uh, and working on the repairman side of it, uh, of the light sport repairman aircraft. So I haven't got all the way into that yet. So I'm doing a pretty deep dive analysis. It's over 300 pages, so there's a lot there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I know you have, uh, you have been spending all of your time on this since the, uh, since the notice came out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, can you tell us um, uh, what AOPA has been doing? I know we've been working on this for years and years and years advocating for a lot of the points that have been included in this NPRM. Um, can you give us an, a, you know, an overview of what AOPA has done and how we worked with the FAA and other associations to help this? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, so looking back through the history of uh, Mosaic, uh, about 2013 is when uh, uh, this started and AOPA was involved from the beginning 
And a lot of that credit, majority of it goes to Mark Baker. His, he's uh, been a major player in helping influence the FAA and moving Mosaic forward. Uh, this has been a long time coming and uh, too long in our opinion, but uh, we're here and that's a great thing. There is a lot coming out. Uh, but yeah, since 2013, I've been involved personally with it uh, since uh, for three years and tomorrow's my third anniversary with AOPA and that's uh, since I've been involved from day one <laughs> with, AO with uh, Mosaic. Well, this is an awesome anniversary present for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. All right. Well, thank you, Murray. Hey, is there anything that we need our AOPA members, pilots, our viewers to do? Yeah, excellent question. And the answer to that is yes. Uh, I would ask members, and there's a lot of them uh, that we've heard from that want wondering about Mosaic, when it's coming out. Uh, get in that uh, NPRM, review it. Uh, that comment period is open for 90 days, I believe it is. And read through it uh, and, and comment accordingly. If you see some areas where uh, you feel there needs to be a comment made, definitely get in there and do it. AOPA is definitely uh, doing a deep dive analysis and we will be uh, making comments. Uh, you know, I, I, like I said, I just started going through this thing today and I'll be on it for the next few weeks, uh, analyzing it and determining where we need to still uh, help influence even better with the FAA uh, going forward on the NPRM. So Marie, after everyone has submitted their comments and that period closes in 90 days, what happens after that and what's the timeline? Yeah, so what happens next is uh, the FAA is required to go through every single comment and they will bucketize the comments that are very similar and they have to respond to that in the Federal Register. And they'll come back with, uh, uh, you know, they'll listen to, they'll consider all the comments and then determine which ones they can implement and which ones they disagree with. And they'll, they'll document that. Uh, and then after that, uh, you know, the projection is this, this rule will go final the end of uh, 24, the end of next year is what they're shooting for. It does take time. The rulemaking process is not fast. Okay, that sounds good. And so for all of you watching, we're gonna drop a link to that NPRM down in the description below to make it easy for you to go there and review it and submit your comments. Well, Murray, I appreciate you taking some time away from the NPRM to talk to us and give us a better understanding of what this means for the general aviation industry. Definitely a lot of great wins. Appreciate everything you and the whole advocacy team has been doing for us. Thank you. It's what we're here to do. Definitely appreciate it. Thanks, Murray. <laughs>